In the previous parts of this tutorial series, we did a pretty nice app that can show the weather in different cities around the world. But normally, we want to know the weather to know how to dress, how to plan the day ahead. For this, I really don't need to know what's the weather like in the opposite side of the world. In this case, we need to type in our current city's name as many times as we want to know the state of the weather during the day. What a nightmare, right? In order to make our life easier, we should use geolocation to get our current position by one button press. So here we have our current app and we will need a button to call a geolocation function. For the geolocation I found a really good Flutter plugin, it's called Geolocator. It has 100 points in rating and in the features it says get the current location of the device. And this is exactly what we want. So let's paste this into our pubsec file and click pub get as usual. Then if we go back to the documentation of the geolocator, we can find there an interesting link that says if you are new to the plugin, this would be a great place to get started. Wow, I don't deny it, I'm totally new to this plugin, so let's find out what this article is about. Ok, so we need to add this line into the dependencies. Ok, we have already done it. Let's move on. Alright, iOS permissions. We need to set these permissions because we need to ask the user to allow the usage of geolocation. So we need to paste these lines into our info.plist file. So let's navigate back to Android Studio. Um, so right after I managed to copy those lines. Okay, almost done. We can find this file inside the iOS folder. Let's go to runner folder and here we can find the info.plist. Let's paste those lines at the very end of the dict below this false line. Alright, let's read this article further. We need to do something similar in the Android folder as well. As you can see, we need to paste these two lines into the Android manifest.xml file. The Android manifest is in the Android folders app src main folder. Here we need to paste it at the very end of the manifest class. Ok, so now we are ready with the background stuff. Now we can do the fun part to actually write the code. Not that we would need to write as much code in this video, because in this article there's a solution as well for our problem. As you can see in this image, the geolocator can tell us which city our phone is located in. So let's check out the source code and let's find out what parts we need for our better app. First we need these three lines to initialize the new variables, what we will need for the functions. Let's paste them under our other variables, but as always we need to import the geolocator package at the beginning of our application. There are two functions in the source code. The first, called getCurrentLocation, returns with the latitude and longitude information of the device. And the other function, as we can see from the name, can return with the name of the city, what is located on that position. Since this is what we want, we need both of these functions. So let's copy, by the way, I find this website really hard to copying and paste down below our own text field submitted function. Ok, so as you can see we need to call this function inside a button and we are good to go. Oh, I pasted here too much so I delete this bracket. So now we need a button to call the getCurrentLocation function. In the design we should place an icon at the upper right corner, in my opinion it would look nice. For this let's create an up bar inside the scaffold. Now we don't use an actual button but an icon read by a gesture detector. For this, inside the app bar widget, let's define the actions where we can place our gesture detector widget. This widget has a property called onTap. This property get called when the user tapped on the icon. So we need to call our get current location function here. Don't worry if you are making mistakes during coding. 
As you can see, I managed to call a totally different variable instead of the function I wanted to call. I didn't realize it until the very end of the coding session, so pay attention to call the get current location function here. As the child of the gesture detector, let's create an icon widget with icons.locationCity with the size of 36. As you can see, our app bar appears with this flashy blue color that ruins our nice user interface. Let's set the app bar's background color to transparent. It's better now, but this grayish thing is still annoying. Fortunately, it's just the elevation was the part of the original app bar, so we only need to set this elevation to zero. Then let's wrap the gesture detector with a padding widget, which has edge insets only at the right. Let's set it to 20. It's time to change a little bit on the get address from latitude and longitude function because currently it sets the current address variables value to the current city, postal code and country. But what we really need is the city's name. Then we need to pass the city to the fetch search function and this fetch search function will get the VoE ID of the city and then we also call the fetch location function as usual to get the actual weather of that city. Fortunately, we have a function what calls these two functions one after each other. It is the onTextFieldSubmitted function. I was too excited to see how the app is working, so I didn't rename that function. Therefore, I'm using an onTextField submitted in an environment where there isn't any text field. I advise you to rename that function to something more consistent like a get location, for example. It makes easier to see through your code for somebody else and for your future self as well. So let's call this function with the place.locality inside the try block of the get address function. Let's reload the app and click to that icon. Okay, that was the point where I discovered my mistake and I realized I didn't even call any of the new functions. No worries, let's try it again. I don't know if you will get this error or not, but I got a missing plugin implementation error. I thought it's something about the permission that we have made in the info.plist file, but after I deleted the app from the device and then run it again, the error has disappeared and the app worked fine. So let's click on the icon and hooray, the app asks for permission to access the device location. As you can see, we didn't write this question in the main.dart file, but with the permissions in the iOS and Android folders. Click Hello and then um, nothing happened. What? If you're working on an iPhone simulator like me, don't worry if nothing changes. The default location of the simulator is the coordinates of San Francisco. And we were already seeing the weather of San Francisco. But if you print out the place that locality inside the get address function, you can see this in the console. You can change the simulator's current position in the debug menu. Then click location and in the current location you can write any other coordinates. If we check out the weather in another city, we can click to the current location icon and voila, we get the simulator's current location. In Android Emulator, you can change your current location with using a map that makes it more fun. And still, the app is working because it shows the weather in that city I have chosen on the map. You can try it out on your phone as well, but please for now let's overlook that minor problem of the API that if you are in a smaller city, you can get data about its weather. 
While I did this tutorial, I discovered an error. In my case, in iOS simulator there was no problem, but in Android I found a bottom overflowed error when the keyboard has appeared. But we can fix this very easily. Just right resize to avoid bottom inset into the scaffold widget and set it to false. And that's all, now this error has disappeared. So now we have an improved weather app, where the user can search for his or her current location by using geolocation. If you have stuck somewhere, you can find the source code for all of the episodes of this tutorial on my GitHub. I will leave a link in the description box for that. If you get some value from this tutorial series, hit the subscribe button and like these videos to help others to find them and learn from them. Thank you and see you in my next video.